The last filter we'd like to demonstrate is the Find Edges filter. It is not located within the filter gallery. Instead, it must be applied via the filter menu. Stylize then Find Edges. This is a filter that looks horrible when the default settings are applied. It is funky, weird, and distorting. You can't even tell what the original image was after it's been applied. However, when combined with layer masks and blending modes, cool things can happen. In this example, I am painting with a low opacity black paintbrush on the layer mask created by the Find Edge Smart Filter. By doing so, I can slowly bring back the original texture of the image. The more I paint, the more the original image starts to show, show through. This is another example of the Find Edges filter in action. The default results in this example isn't as distracting as the previous example, but it still doesn't look much like the original image. However, as I repeat the same exact process I used on the last image by painting with a low opacity black paintbrush on the smart filter layer mask, I can slowly bring color and texture from the original image back into the effect. The finished result looks more like a mechanical drawing than a photograph. And so we will demo this in Photoshop. And so I've already applied that filter, but I want to show you how I did that. And so obviously, since I've said that for every video so far, I duplicated my background layer and I converted it to be a smart object so that we're applying smart filters. In this case, instead of choosing filter and then filter gallery, I went down to the bottom where it says stylize and I chose find edges. You can experiment with these other ones, but we're going to demo the find edges one. And as Whitney said, it looks horrible. I can't, I don't even know what it used to be. The The second image we're going to demo is a little bit better. You can still see it was some sort of wheel thing, um, but it doesn't really give a great look. And it's definitely one of those filters that if you apply it, it will look like you just hit a stock uh, filter in Photoshop and you said, oh, it's great. And you turned it in. But if you combine it with those other things that we've been talking about for this lecture, um, in this case, I'm going to use a paintbrush. Let me grab the paintbrush. And my paintbrush is way too big, so I'm going to make it smaller. And you paint back. And so in this case, there's lots of trees that are kind of puffy and circular. And so instead of painting lines, because you'll be able to see the lines, I am going to simply just kind of click with my circle to add texture back into the image. And I'm going to work my way in a circle around the house. So I've decided that this house in the countryside is the main part of the image. And so as I paint around it, and I'm literally just using circles to add texture in. Um, I am going to paint the color back into the image to create a stylized effect that might be appropriate for a project that I'm working on. And so I could do this whole image. I'm not going to because I want to show you the other image and it would take me a few minutes to go through. But you could add more or less texture in different areas. And so maybe this area over here you also think is important. And so you add a lot of texture back in or a lot of color back in. But the area in between, you only add light amounts of the image in to the picture. Now, this can also be applied. See, I can't let it go. I need it to look nice. Um, it can also be applied in images where the filter isn't as drastic. And so if we come over to the other example, you can still see this was um, a big wheel. It's actually from the Eiffel Tower. Um, you can see it's a big wheel, but it doesn't look good. It looks funky. And so we can use the same um, we can use the same process to bring some color back into this image. And so with my layer mask selected, if we select a paintbrush and it has an opacity, in this case an opacity setting of 23, we can slowly paint back into this image. And so in this case, instead of doing circles because that texture of the first image worked well with circles but this might not, maybe I'll paint in with strokes and I will come through and I will paint some texture back in and across the image. And you can slowly add your texture back in like I did in the example. And so you want to kind of overlap the, the painting so it's not as drastic. I kind of went a little bit too dark in that one area. But eventually, as you paint over the entire image, it will bring color slowly back into the project. And you kind of make it look like it's a mechanical drawing instead of a find edges filter or stock filter from Photoshop. So I'll just focus on this bottom part of the image and we'll pretend that I did the entire image. And so if we jump back to the slideshow, you can see what the final result may look like, um, depending on how much or how little you paint the color back into the image. Very cool. Yes, so that about wraps up our lecture on filters. I don't know about Whitney, but I would like to finish up the lecture by emphasizing that we didn't even 
have a drop in the bucket for the amount of filters that you can apply in Photoshop. And so my expectation for you is that you will start to experiment with these filters and make a list of the ones that work for you and what happens when you apply them. And then you also are constantly thinking about making the change look a little bit more subtle than whatever the stock filter would apply. Anything else to add, Whitney? Well, you can always share your techniques and everything that you have on the skills practice, if you like. Yeah, and um, not to go on too much of a tangent here, Whitney and I both give extra credit if you participate in those skills practice activities, but you have to request it when you submit your exam. And so if you are practicing along with these slideshows and you save your file, submit them on the skills practice discussion threads, and then when you submit your exam for that module, let us know. We'll go check it out, and we'll award a point or two of extra credit on your exam.